Okay, everybody know Danielle Aaron? Okay, okay. okay. they're going to help me out here, okay? I need for you guys to look at each other. Okay, look at each other and then fall deeply in love. <laughs> Don't fall in love with your mouth full, okay? It's, <laughs> it's a bad plan. Okay, did you do that for me? Do you feel like love? Do you feel some like heat and energy there in chemistry? Okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, here they are. <laughs> They've fallen in love and there they are. So uh, they're in love, and they, they date, they go to prom, you know, and all this stuff. And they decide to get married. So we're, gonna, we're all going to go to the wedding, so we're going to get Danielle all fixed up to get married. And there she is, looking good, yeah. Aaron is a little, he's like most guys coming to his wedding. He's not quite sure what's going on. Uh, so anyway, we get them all fixed up, and we have a wedding, and we have champagne, and it's so romantic. And then they go off on their honeymoon, nice car. Yeah, really excellent car there, and off they go to the honeymoon. Aaron, you really should have called ahead to see if there was a hotel on the island, is what I'm telling you, okay? But that's okay, they're young and in love, and it's great, and the heat of their passion sets their horizon on fire. So they come back from the honeymoon, and lo and behold, it works. <laughs> it's time to have babies. Yeah, all right. So they go to the doctor for the ultrasound, get all checked out, and the doctor says, look, there's a little guy in there. Oh, oh, what? There's another one over there. Oh, my gosh, there's three of them. <laughs> it's clearly two girls and a boy. Um, so uh, we're going to have triplets, triplets. Aaron, way to go, man. <laughs> what a stud. I guess, did, you, did you know he was? Never mind. You know, multiple births, you should check that before you get married. Now, they run in families. Okay, so Danielle, I jumped ahead a slide, that's okay. Danielle has, uh, in the midst of all this, she's applied to and been accepted by a new space program, okay? So, in between being pregnant and being newly married and all that kind of stuff, you know, she's training for the space program, and, and, and here she is with her teammates using uh, really, really old uniforms, in fact, uh, really old astronauts. Um, and... Uh, so she trains, and she's pregnant, and she's got triplets, and you know, it comes, to give, it comes time to give birth. It's time to, time to have babies, and it's also time to blast off. So off to the hospital they go, have babies, and, uh, and they decide that, uh, that oh, this is a, a, a book that they wrote while they were training, how to astronaut, they, you know, you do this now, you gotta write books about things. So the astronauts wrote a book. They also had an unfortunate moment that we just don't want to talk about and put, a, put out a DVD. And, and they're going to take pets on the trip with them, so they got their pets and uh, took pictures of the pets. Off we go into space. They blast off into space, leaving Aaron behind with three little babies. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Mr. Mom. And, and they go up into orbit. There's the, the inter intergalactic interplanetary space donut thing that they're going to go in. Off into deep space. And uh, off they head into deep space. And they're going how long? Long time. How fast are they going? Very fast. Okay. They're going a long time. They're going very fast. And uh, meanwhile, back on Earth, the little ones are growing up. And uh, looking pretty obnoxious. Aaron is, is struggling with the whole single dad thing there. He's <laughs> having a hard time. And we have, to, we have to feel sorry for him. And they're gone a long time. They go very fast. And then they, they turn around and they come back. And so here they come back. And... Uh, <laughs> We're on a budget here, and, uh, and so they have, uh, clearly they're going to have a rough landing and, uh, you know, damage report, could there be any more damage? Yeah. So, uh, and let's talk about exactly what went on while they were gone. It's all about time. It's all about Einstein. There's Albert down in the corner talking to us about time. Um, and let's just review. When she left, the babies had just been born. So how old were they in years? Zero. They were zero years old. Very good. Okay, they were zero years old. Let's just say that she and Aaron were 19 years old when she left. Pretty young to be going off into space and having triplets. And 19 years old. They were gone for 30. She was gone for 30 years. She was gone. I told you, she was gone a long time. She was gone for 30 years. So we can do the math. Uh, she was gone for 30 years. She was 19 years old when she left. So how old is she now? She's 49 years old. I know you guys paid attention in math class. And she looks good, all right? She just looks great. All right. Looks awesome coming back. Being in space is good for you. And, uh, and she comes down the ramp to see Aaron, and here he comes, and he just doesn't look so good. He looks bad. He just looks bad. In fact, he looks so bad that Danielle, who really looks to be very sweet and nice here, and I can't believe she would do this, but she does. She, you know, she asked him for some ID. You know, she just, she, she checks him to see if he's really her husband. So she checks his ID, and she finds out that Aaron is 79 years old. 
79 years old. And so she does the math really quickly and she says, now wait, I've been gone 30 years and I was 19 when I left and so I'm 49. So he ought to be 49, but he's 79, and he, but he was 19 when I left too, which means that 60 years have passed for Aaron. He's 60 years older. He's 30 years older than I am. And then she goes, oh my gosh, what about the kids? And the kids come toddling up the ramp. And they're 60 years old. She's younger than her children. If she could get rid of Aaron, and I'm telling you, one good kiss will do it. He's just going to drop dead right there on the pavement. <laughs> she could date her grandchildren's friends, which would be sick and wrong, Danielle. Don't do that, okay? But it's, it's, it's possible. <laughs> All right, we got it. Yes, thank you. Go away. I don't care if you're confused. You just pay attention. All right, let's talk about it. This is what Einstein did. Sitting on his stool in Bern, Switzerland, thinking with a piece of paper and a pencil, just sitting there kind of thinking about stuff and reading stuff. And he knew a couple of things. One of the things that he know, knew is the speed of light was an absolute. Speed of light doesn't change in a vacuum. They had just done some experiments. A couple of guys named Morley and Michelson did some experiments to show the speed of light never changes in a vacuum. And it doesn't change in really radical ways that we don't have time to go into here tonight. It's worth reading about because it's a lot of fun. But as Einstein thought, thought through this, he realized that if speed of light doesn't change, then something else must. Time cannot be an absolute. Time, therefore, changes as you get close to the speed of light. How fast was she going? Very fast. She's going very fast. She was going 90% of the speed of light. What's the speed of light in uh, kilometers per second? Anybody know? Yeah, yeah, we always know it in like times 10 to the whatever it happens. It's 300,000, it's close to 300,000 kilometers per second. It's really 299 and change, but we're going to go with 300,000 because it's a nice round number, all right? 300,000 kilometers per second. She was going at 90% of the speed of light, which is 270. It's very fast. It's 270,000 kilometers per second. There's the equation that Einstein used to figure this out. It's a pretty simple equation. I sat down and fiddled with it. Here's, here's what Danielle and everybody on the spaceship with her was doing. 270,000 kilometers per second. Time changes. Einstein used this equation, figured it out, applied it to what the speed was, and you find out that at that speed, five years in the spaceship is exactly the same as 10 years on Earth. 50 years on the spaceship, 100 years on Earth. 30 years on the spaceship, 60 years on Earth. So when she's on the spaceship, time is passing at half the speed that it is on Earth. Half. So as you get a lot closer to the speed of light, the changes get dramatically weird. 10 minutes equals 40 years. 10 minutes on the spaceship, 40 years here on Earth. At just a little bit faster than that, and when I say a little bit, 299,999 point several other nines and an eight kilometers per second. We're talking about, I figured, tried to figure it out if I remember it correctly, four millimeters a second faster. Four millimeters a second faster than she was going. 20 seconds equals 80 years. The closer you get to the speed of light, the more radical the departure from your starting point. And in fact, as you get to the speed of light, you can see on the left side of the equation, five years, 10 minutes, 20 seconds, that the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and going down to zero. And on the right side of the equation, 10 years, 40 years, 80 years, 8,000 years, 8 million years, 8 billion years. As you are at the speed of light, all of time happens in no time at all.